But Gemma, can you just give us an insight into why you're supporting Ben's Stand Up Foundation this evening? Yes, if you if you want to take a microphone, there you go. It sounds like I'm going to do like a massive essay. Oh, yeah. Hello, hi. <laughs> I'm going to get up like five, eight, four pages. Joking. <laughs> um, okay, so it's a, it's a really big uh, privilege to be here tonight. Um, it, it was very last minute. I've got to go up at four o'clock in the morning to get back to Leeds to film, which is going to kill me. So look out for the scenes in six weeks when I'm dying on my ass. <laughs> um, so, but I'm here because um, I feel very passionately uh, about anti-bullying, and obviously, if there's something that we can do with our little bit of profile that we have. Um, it's to raise awareness and, and I have absolute <coughs> utmost admiration for what Ben has done uh, in terms of speaking out about, about a tragedy in terms of helping others. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done Emmerdale and I've done uh, Casualty, played a drug addict, yay! Um, and I've been a, a, a pub down in Doctors, yay! And I'm about to slap Sam in Emmerdale, so it's brilliant. It's, uh, it's all going really well for me. Um, but if I told you... <laughs> If I told you at the age of 10, um, I was admitted to a, a children's psychiatric unit um, and I was told if I didn't drink a cup of water, I would be dead in 24 hours. If I told you at 14, I was um, emaciated and on a hospital bed yet again um, and would be dead uh, if I didn't go on a drip. If I told you that at 19, I stood in my kitchen with a knife to my wrist about to end it all, and if I told you at 20 that I had a heart attack, um, would you believe me? No. And that all stems from bullying. Um, the bullying uh, started like Jack uh, spoke about. I was just a good person. Do you know what? I was just a kind, enthusiastic, good person. And I excelled uh, at life in terms of I loved it because I had a fantastic family. Uh, I had fantastic friends. And then everything changed overnight. Um, I used to look like a tomboy. Um, yes, I know, would you believe? Um, with a bowler hat haircut, I used to be, you know, lacking out with the lads playing football. And then at about the age of nine, ten, I started coming into my own as a young woman. And um, that was frowned upon, and that was not liked by a group of girls. Um, so at primary school, the bullying started, and I said nothing. Um, at high school, it continued, um, and I said nothing. And I was cowered in, um, in the toilets, in the cubicles, having bloody tampons thrown at me, and um, wet towels, and um, a whole host of disgusting excrement thrown at me over the top of the cubicle. And I just wish they would have dragged me out of that cubicle and beat me to a pulp. Because what they were doing was behind closed doors and there was no physical scars, but mentally, again, like Jack, I lost all self-esteem, I lost all self-worth, and I lost all self-confidence. Um, and I was talking to my mum and dad last night, I said, oh my God, it's like, Ben Cohen's like, I have to speak to the dog, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, what the hell do I say? I'm going to drink too much, and I'm going to fall over, which I haven't done, so my dad would be really proud. Um, and, yay, go me! And I was saying to my mum and dad, I was like, did I ever tell you once about the bullying? And they said, Jen, he never said once, and it wasn't until I was about 19, 20 that it all came out in the open. And my biggest, biggest regret is not speaking out sooner. Now, the bullying manifested in me, as you might have um, picked up on, in an eating disorder, uh, and I suffered with anorexia for 12 years. And um, that's a very complex issue and a whole different ball game. But the whole point of, of Ben's charity is looking at long-term effects on what it does to people. And that was my sanctuary. I couldn't control what people were doing or saying about me, but I could control my body. I could control what was going inside me, and I could control me disappearing. So like Jack cowered in his room, yeah, so did I. And I became a skeleton, and I couldn't get out of bed, and my life was diminished. So what I'm trying to say right now is that, long story short, I spoke out eventually. I wish I'd have done it sooner, and this is why I think the real world work that is going in, and the funding that's going into real world work is so important, because. Believe it or not, I'm 31. I know, I know. Um, but 20 years ago, you know, there wasn't this sort of help happening. Um, I'm a patron of my mum and dad's charity, um, Seed, which is a disorder charity. Um, and it's, and it's, 
you know what goes? Because it's people like us who have a backstory, who who wear our hearts on our sleeves. And do you know what? We get persecuted for it sometimes, but I'm dead proud to be here and standing up tall and standing up towards bullying. And I have one lesson in life that, you know, if I'm blessed enough to have kids, I'll tell them that you can grow dirt from flowers. No, you can grow flowers from dirt. I'm going to be a really bad mum. You can grow flowers from... <laughs> I'm going to be crap. Anyway, we're going to be fine. Um, no, you, you can grow flowers where dirt used to be, and you can use the shit. Because the shit actually grows a really good garden, and it makes you stand tall. And another one. Oh, and another one, and it's because I love musicals, and I'm really like showbiz jazz on me. It's never let anybody dull your sparkle. And I'm going to stand here like a big glitter pole, and I'm going to stick two fingers right up in the air, to all those bullies who tried to kill me and say, puffing you with glitter right now. <laughs> oh, let's hear it for Gemma. What a fantastic lady.